Okay, so I finally did it. Um, I'm finally on the YouTubes. Last week I sent out a tweet asking for ideas. I, I said I was going to start filming videos about locksmithing and lock sport related topics, I guess, and I asked people for their ideas because, truth be told, I'm a very, uh, I have no idea what people want to see. Uh, so I, I figured I'd ask for help, and one of the first topics that came up was small format interchangeable core, or SFIC. Somebody wanted to know the, I guess, process for pinning or combinating small format cores. So I figured I'd make that video, but before I did that, I wanted to make a video about the tools used to service small format cores. That way, during the process of showing how to combinate one, I didn't create any confusion. Now, just like anything in life, whether it's gonna be a hobby, if you're in lock sport or business and, and locksmithing, you're gonna to need to invest some money to get started I guess uh, you're gonna need the course which I've got in front of us right now uh, you're gonna need pins you're gonna need key blanks you're gonna need caps and you're going to need springs at, at the very least now in addition to that you're also gonna need a few tools to service them the tools I'm gonna show you today you don't necessarily need all of them I'll kinda identify what I use and what I don't use and it's really up to you and your budget as to how far uh, you want to go with your investment. So a few of the items you're already going to have, uh, for example, uh, tweezers. Uh, this pair is by Lab and it's specifically made for small format pins which have a smaller diameter than um, let's say traditional pins for Schlage and Sargent and other manufacturers. You can use a general set of tweezers that are made for those manufacturers that's fine these are just a little bit uh, better suited for small format because they are machined for that smaller diameter so you can get a little bit snugger grip on them when you're using them but you can use either or it doesn't matter there are pinning blocks of course you can use that when decoding um, you more than likely already have that if not you've got something you've made on your own which is fine too just anything to keep track of the pins as you pull them out. Now let's assume that you've got a core already pinned up. Let's assume if you're a locksmith that you're at a job and you need to rekey or recombinate this core, or if you're a lock sport hobbyist type, you just want to pin it on your own and, and figure out how it works. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is get the existing pins out. As you can see at the top, this one already has caps in it because it's got pins, it's already pinned up. So in order to get those out, you're going to need uh, what they call ejector pins. Um, this first one's from Best. This is the one I prefer. It's the best one. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, part number is CD548. Uh, I use this not only for Best, but for other cores. I mean, even some Medico when I'm pinning it up, it, it helps seat the pins properly. This one's made uh, by Medico, or I guess for Keymark, if you want to say it like that. This is a little bit different. As you can see, this the handle's a little bit smaller, and I don't know if you can pick it up, but the diameter of the pin itself is smaller than the best. And the reason that is, is on the newer Medico X4, again, I'll try to show this. I don't know if you can see it. But if you can see these holes at the bottom, these are called ejector holes. On the left is the Medico X4, on the right is Best. You can see that the uh, X4 pins are smaller than the Best. And so this ejector pin made specifically for Keymark fits a lot better into these. It can also be used in Best if you wanted. But conversely, if you try to fit a Best ejector pin in here, it's very tight and I'm not even touching the first pin. It's already called up. Um, so there's nothing wrong with either of those two. Obviously, if you're going to be doing Keymark, you're going to need their special one. This is another one made by A4, uh, A1. And as you can see, this is a larger diameter, so it's it's suited for small format. And uh, not necessarily, see I'm already binding up again, not necessarily for Keymark. 
when you have these, you're going to need to get the pins out in some way. And this is what they call a dumping block. This is also made by A1. A1 makes a lot of tools for small formats. So you're going to kind of see a recurring theme here. A lot of the tools are going to be A1. Basically what you do is you take your core, slide it in upside down, tighten a little set screw, not too much. If you bind it, you can actually start to deform some of the chambers, which makes it hard to get out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your ejector pin and just lightly tap it. I use a ball peen hammer and we've already cleared that chamber. And you do that so on and so forth down the line, six or seven chambers, depending on the type of core you have. At the end of it, this fills up. You can unscrew this. Actually, you see there's a good number of stuff in there that I didn't bother to clear before we started, but I guess that gives a good illustration. Fills up. You can dump that, sort it, scrap it if you want. It's up to you. You don't have to use one of those. In fact, I didn't use it for many years. I'll show you a trick that I do. Um, specifically, here's best. Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm sorry, I'm left-handed. What I was trying to say is that my right hand is my non-dominant hand, so if you wanted to remove the pins and springs and caps from a core and you didn't want to invest in the dumping block, what you can do is on your hand, place the core between your ring finger and the palm and hold it tight. Let me get it in the camera. Sorry, I'm all new to this. And get a snug grip on it and then you want to rotate it and then you stick the ejector pin into the first chamber, you hold it, and then you can knock it out. And there goes some pins I'm going to have to clean up, but you get the point. And when you have it in your hand, I like to do the first three or four, and then I like to turn it around because what happens is if you just go in order, by the time you get to the seventh one, you can see when it ejects, it's going to go right in my palm. Now it doesn't hurt that much, but then again, it's not pleasant. So you get all your pins out and then you've got an, an empty or core and you're ready to combinate. So let me just knock these out real quick. Okay, so we've got it out. Um, I guess I should show you decoding first. Okay, let's say you've got a core and you want to decode it to find out the pins. One of the tools you can use is a decoding block. This is also made by A1, surprise, surprise. And basically, this allows you to knock out the pins but still maintain their order in the core so that when you remove the core and you open this up, you can see the pins in there and measure them, uh, say if you were decoding for the control key or something else. Um, the way this works, again, just like the... Um, dumping block, you slide it in upside down, loosen the set screw, tighten the set screw again, not too much. You knock the pins in, all of them, loosen your set screw and then very carefully you slide the core out, push it down, and then set it down, and then there would be all your pins and you could decode it there. Um, you don't have to use that again. Um, I'll show you how often we use them. We've got spare new ones that we've never even used. So. But uh, it's up to you. Another way you can do that without having to invest in a tool is let's say we've got a core here. This is an X4, so I'm going to use this different ejector pin. What I do is I place the core top down so that the caps are facing towards the mat or whatever you're using, and I knock it out. So once I've got it out, or I'm sure that the cap's out. What I'll do is I'll lean it forward and I'll go ahead and pull the pin and the spring out of the way. And then what I'll do in one motion is I will push the pins out with the ejector pin while I'm pulling the core away from me. And what that's going to do is it's going to drop them in the order they are. Now, obviously, that's a little bit sloppy, but I know which one's the top, which one's the control and build up, which one's the master, and then which one's the bottom. And then I can take that and, and, and put it into my pinning block if I want it. So that gives you, uh, I guess, a few options on how to remove pins in a way to decode them. Now let's say that you're starting from scratch and you want to pin one up. 
you can turn around and reuse that capping block or that dumping block uh, and just turn it right side up so that now you can pin from the top. Another way you can do it, this is a pinning block that's made by Kaba. The top you have a notch for small format. On the other side you've got one for Corbin Russwin and one for Yale. I don't know if they still make these. I know Kaba still makes cylinder servicing tools like a reamer. I don't know if they still make this one though, but um, if they don't, there's another alternative. This is a Medico pinning block. And yeah, I know that, you know, there, there's not going to be a small format here, but here is a former rim cylinder for a Medico 32 series that we modified. We basically cut it in half and filed it smooth. Now, obviously, Medico 32 is going to be a lot larger than small format, but you get the point that you can put the core in there to hold it while you pin it up. And you can either slide it into something like this cylinder block, or if you wanted, you could put this in a vise and it would hold it in place while you pinned it. So there's three tools, I guess you can say. Now, if you're like me, I don't actually use any of them. I like to pin in my hand. And what I'll do is I'll, in my left hand, again, I'm left handed, I'll hold the ejector pin, in my left hand, and in the right hand, I'll hold the core. And basically, what I'll do is when I'm grabbing for pins, I'll switch over to the left hand, grab it out, put them in, blah, blah, blah. And then when I'm done with the chamber, I'll follow it up with the ejector pin, push all the way down to make sure it seats properly, and then I'll move on. But we'll go more into that when I do the combinating in pinning video. So when you've got it all pinned up and you want to put the caps on, if it's a capped core, and we'll explain the difference between capped core and a cover or a spring cover, I guess. You're going to want to put the caps on. So what you can do is you take what this is called a capping block. It seems like everything's called a block. Drop your spring in. I don't have any caps here. Um, put your cap on top and you're going to take this capping tool, set it in, hammer it, and that'll cap the core, or that individual chamber rather. These are very popular if you're going to be doing them in the field. If you're going to be doing them at home or in your shop or whatever, you can also use these uh, a lot cheaper than capping presses, which I'll show you in a bit, but these are very ubiquitous, cheap, easy to use. The only thing I don't like about them is that over time the tip of this tool can mushroom out and deform and when that happens the caps won't necessarily seat properly so you kind of have to pay attention to it and keep up to date with it make sure everything's where it should be otherwise you'll get those uneven caps and that's not fun. Now I said something earlier a little bit about covers not all small format use caps. Peaks uh, by Kaba does not Falcon is the big one that doesn't. So what you'll have to do is get spring covers. And you're just going to have to imagine here, and I know this is caps, but if it was a cover type core like a Falcon, you'd have a channel that run ran the length of the chambers. You put your springs in, obviously. You put your cap on top. And of course, the springs are going to be pressing this up, so you kind of need both hands when you do it. But this is just for illustration purposes. And then you can use a staking tool. And this is a tool that you might already have for servicing other, other cylinders. You press that on top, pushing against the uh, springs while you're doing it. Of course, it's going to be really hard because there's no channel for me to do it. But. Anywho, you hold it in place like that. Take your ball peen hammer, tap it in, and that's how that's held into place. Pull that one out. One more tool I like to use before we go to the capping presses is just a standard housing for it. And what this is for is it helps greatly after you've pinned it, after you've capped it or put the cover on it. If you take your control key, slide it in here, then I'll lubricate it. 
then I'll test the keys out. And the reason for that is, is number one, I'm not gonna be getting lubricant all over my fingers. And then number two, it gives me a better grip. So when I'm testing out keys, I can hold it, you know, basically with my whole fist, as opposed to with this, you know, I might only be getting my index finger and the thumb. So those are just some of the tools for servicing, whether you're pinning one up, decoding one, emptying it out. Of all the tools, really, I'm gonna be honest, use the ejector. When I'm decoding, I'll pull it out the way that you saw me do it. Um, I don't really use these, I don't use, I, I, I just basically lay them out on the mat. That's easy enough for me. That's the way I've done it for years. If you do it differently, more power to you. Uh, that's just not how I do it, and that's not a knock against those who do. It's just, you know, that's my habit. That's how I got started, and that's that's what I do. You don't necessarily need any of the uh, fancy pinning blocks. If you want, though, I mean, more power to you. Like I said, it's up to you. Um, you'll definitely need the capping block however because you're not going to be capping without it unless you're using a core that has a cover and then I guess in that sense you could stick it into the modified housing that I spoke about earlier and then cap it that way I guess you could also do the same in this the Kaba pinning block in fact when I do Yale I'll slide them in here and since Yale uses spring covers I'll cap them right here in this using the staking tool but that's basically it before I show you the, um, can't think of the word, press. So there's a few different presses I'll show you. This first one here is manufactured by Best. And this individually caps. And when I say individually, what I mean is that you have to manually load there's a cap. You have to manually load a cap into each chamber. So if you've got six chambers in your core, you're gonna to have to load up six. So you put your core in through here, drop your pins or your springs down, and then follow that up. You're going to load each pin. There's a handle right here. You pull down and it's gonna press them in. A faster and better way, in my opinion, is this machine that's made by A1. No surprise, A1, making more stuff. This uses uh, strips rather than caps, and it actually presses out the caps from the strip. So what you do is you load your core in through here, put your springs in, then take your strip, lock it into place. Again, you pull down on the lever, and it'll press fresh caps right to the core itself. And then when you do it a, a few thousand times, you'll have all those leftover ones that you can recycle, hundreds and hundreds. Um, there's a part number, CS250, if you wanted to use a strip or if you're interested in strip. But other than that, that's basically the servicing tools for small format. Uh, like I said at the start of this video, I'm going to start making videos based on requests from what people want to see what they want to learn about. And the best way to do that, you can either leave a comment on this video or you can find me on Twitter at I like the Falcons because I like the Falcons. And just make a request and I will do my best to cover it. The only rules are I don't do bypass. I don't talk about bypass or picking or anything like that. Uh, the associations I'm a member of really wouldn't like that. And truth be told, I don't really want to share that information anyways. Besides, there's people that do it elsewhere and probably do a better job than I ever could. So thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to answer. And hopefully I kind of gave you an idea of what you need to know as far as tools for small format. Thanks.